Ladies and gentlemen, scallywags from everywhere, we are about to watch the deep dive for season 11. Now, I am going to potentially pause and commentate my thoughts and my feelings while we watch this. Now, if I could be so bold, why would you want to watch a season 11 deep dive without your very best drink on hand? Now, I got to say, I'm a Madrinas fan. So if you're going to watch this deep dive, everyone get your Madrinas out. This is the time to watch it. Shout out Madrinas. They're the best. Okay, here we go. The main goals we wanted to try and achieve for season 11 was providing players with the ability to have shorter session experiences. The other kind of main goal is about trying to provide players on demand access to some of the best content that we have in CFDs. Season 11. Part of our goals with this season were to make sessions more predictable, certainly from the start. So we wanted to make sure that every session has a clear and meaningful start point. The purpose of the quest table is about bringing quest all of those table. experiences together. They, they in changed one the name of it. Place, allowing players. To they changed it. It's now called quest table. Damn. <laughs> Just simply board their ship and play what they want when they want. It's going to be a place that you go and access all of the voyages from all the different trading companies. And it's also the place where you can go and start tall tales and resume them and stuff. So you can kind of go into a specific trading company like the Gold Hoarders and then it'll have all of the kind of quest archetypes that they have down the side of the screen and you can just simply select one and just play it whenever you want. I played the game at beta with my family, you know, so it was a real family game for me to start off with. Whoa, whoa, come on, computer. But like, well, probably a lot of other players are going, it's like, what do you do when you kind of go into it? You know, you've got all of this content, but you're just like, no guidance, you kind of just start thrown into the deep end, deep end kind of thing. And it was just trying to bring that all together. That's really the core of what we were trying to achieve here. Then you are seeing the length to all the voyage cards now. Oh, so there's. That's kind of cool. Kind of helps people understand. I wonder what is all like the max length. Shores of Gold. What voyage do we think is like the max length? <laughs> Probably Shores Tried of Gold, right? Because you're going to get lost. Take you, so at least you'll be able to go in with a purpose of, okay, I have this much time. I want to play this kind of thing. And it just kind of helps shorten that process even more. The Discover tab, I'm, I mean, I'm really excited about it. It's going to guide players through their pirate journey, essentially, exposing them to short-term, mid-term, or long-term goals. We wanted the Discover tab to be this place where we could kind of teach players all of the core systems and mechanics of the oh, game cool. and showcase all the breadth of amazing experiences the game has to offer so that they can see stuff, get excited about it, and ultimately go on to play it themselves. We've built a complex... That's kind of cool. Hold logic on. Logic system or recommendation engine that takes into account what the player does, their play style and their progression, and makes a determination about what we should be recommending them. So what... Wait a second. Hold on a second. What? <laughs> so it's like, uh, let's go back a little bit. So it's like a random voyage, right? We went too far back. Have this much time. The Discover tab, um, um, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched this to part. To be this place where they showcase all the want to play it themselves. Yeah, random voyage. Okay, interesting. So it bases, it's AI, quote unquote, algorithm, voyage. What would it say for us, though? Like a seasoned pirates. What would it even say for me? Uh, random voyage. Go steal this gilded from this guy. Thank you. <laughs> Please. This is cool, though. I like this. This is a logic neat. system or recommendation engine that catch a fish, go collect three chickens. How dare what the player does their play style and their progression and makes a determination about what we should be recommending. Random them. voyage so is what cool. What that means for a player like is that you can jump in and we will recommend the things that we think you'll enjoy, 
or are relevant to you or maybe have Fishing. just unlocked based on something that you've just done. So That's cool, honestly. Gonna this is going to be so great for new players. To, um, honestly, though. There, so you'll get kind of these glimpses of what That'd be really cool. is or captaincy. Um, so there's going to be some information about what those things are and kind of give you some goals to work towards and build up to. Experienced players, you're going to have things like you've just unlocked voyages in there or you're going to have events and things like that for community events. Cool. Days, so that's going to be in there as cool. well. So lots of different stuff. It gives us a lot more flexibility to do things like run live events. We can have voyages that activate only for a certain weekend or time period. And we can grant voyages to players that take part in, for instance, a community event. And it really allows us to do a lot more fun live events. Cool. I like that. It gets like an easier system for them to, uh, season 11 to manage stuff start a quest and they'd have to sail to the location of their quest, complete their quest, find the rewards and ultimately return them to an outpost to cash them in. So with season 11, players can just dive directly to the experience and then get straight into the action immediately and then ultimately complete that experience. And See, I think this is really outpost. fantastic. We I really do. discussing and exploring all the key moments that happen across the Sea of Thieves and one of the slowest parts of getting a session started and getting you straight to adventure is sailing to that initial island, whether it's an X marks or going to visit a particular NPC to start a tall tale. We couldn't change the gameplay experience because that's the gameplay and we don't want to change the core loop of players having items of value at risk on the return journey back to the outpost. So the only really stuff that we could change to try and improve the speed of the experience and provide short session experiences was the time that it takes to get to the experience itself. As a converse of that, if you're the sort of player who enjoys, you know, seeing who's out there and attacking ships and that sort of stuff, 50% of the time they were on their way to getting some loot, right? So 50% of the time their ship was empty and 50% of the time you just annoyed some people. So whereas <laughs> now the Chris idea is Chris is right. We did annoy a lot of people. Can we get some Can we get some it? amens in the chat, okay? Please. So Chris is, is right. Huge, He's speaking truth uh, right here. Just like concentrating <laughs> the CFE's experience into all the good bits and chucking away the bits that weren't so fun. What we've done is make sure that if a player does dive to an activity, uh, they can dive again straight away, but they have to complete that activity to dive again. So if they do cancel the activity, there will be a cooldown timer before they can do that again. If a player does choose to dive again straight away after completing that quest, they will lose the loot that they have on board because we really wanted to encourage players to sail to the outpost to cash that loot in. Big. Looking back across the game, the voyages don't really pay out enough gold for their position within the game. When you look at them against the other... That's what I've been saying! Please tell me I'm about to hear something awesome! ...experiences that we have in the title. So this was a huge opportunity for us to not only go back to the voyages and kind of improve their gameplay, make them more fun to play, provide shorter session experiences to players as well, but also to kind of boost the gold value and reputation that they're worth to make them comparable against the other experiences. That's amazing! That <laughs> Thank you, we Rare! We reward players with reputation for the trading companies for the simple act of completing a voyage. This means players who are short on time, who want to jump in for 20 minutes, half now an hour. Now how much, how boosted in, is it? Dive to a voyage, complete that voyage, and they will be rewarded with reputation for that company. For season 11, for our new voyages, we saw the opportunity to create a new set of rewards for players exclusive. What? Order of Souls? Interesting. Look at these trinkets, chat. Look, there's the, they're bringing back the relics. And I'm guessing that that counts towards specifically Order of Souls stuff, which is pretty cool. And is this Order of Souls crates? No, that's merchant. Okay. I see what it is. Order Souls, Gold Hoarder, Merchant. Merchant if we delivering that voyages, stuff. And we've put a lot of time and dedication into making sure that these rewards are valuable and desirable. Um, I know the art teams have done an incredible job. Point zero zero one sure these, uh, <laughs> rewards look incredible. It's always a fun task when we have to design new loot. So this time around, the team was very like luxurious. So players can be expecting lots of gold. We are also working with a new marble shader. So the gold hoarded chests and the gold hoarded treasures will have that marble in them. And it really helps those new treasures to stand out from the ones we already have. All right. And then for the higher tiers, we're actually working with a new 
uh, crystal shader, which really sets itself apart because again, gamers already associate crystal with like premium stuff and like high rarity. For example, for the Order of Soul Skulls, they start off looking like very dark, very obsidian, and then they gradually become more and more crystal where the final skull is like full on crystal skull, which is great. The economy is something that we've tried to maintain over cool. time, but Sea of Thieves has just grown so much. We've added so much. And my job was creating possibly the biggest spreadsheet that we've ever created at Rare and probably the most time consuming spreadsheet uh, that we've ever Poor guy. created. It was. Can we get some S for that guy? That guy. <laughs> Listen, I've made some spreadsheets in my day. That does not sound fun at all. <laughs> Poor guy. You are a hero, sir. An unsung hero, my friend. Oh, my gosh. Basically, my life for this whole uh, year that we've been oh, making this. Oh, uh, man, that poor season. guy. Um, oh, that poor a, guy. A, a Holy crap. But all of that was invaluable in making sure that we balanced our new voyages for season 11 in Good, a way that both big. felt rewarding, but also sat well next to other things in the game is something that we're always going to be looking to tweak and change. That will continue after season 11. And I think that with the work that we've put in for season 11, we're in a, a great place to be able to do that moving forward. And the big goal of season 11 is to make sure no matter what you do, you're always getting the same amount of gold and rep for the amount of time that you put in. That's the goal that we're aiming for. Oh, you're not cool. I'm so happy to hear this is big chat. I've been ranting about do. voyaging sucks. World events within Sea of Thieves are some of our core experiences. We wanted to, as part of season 11, make sure that players could access these world events on demand. And we wanted to do that in a way that doesn't dramatically affect the meaning of world events within this whole of the Sea of Thieves. So we are adding the ability for players to dive to world events. Dude, what is with YouTube right now? It's like mega failing playing this video. Just play. On demand. It means you will always get to the world event that you want. You don't have to spend ages on the server looking. I'd say you're guaranteed the treasure, but that depends on whether you actually beat it <laughs> and no one else comes along and steals it from you. Players won't be able to dive to all of the world events throughout where they need to progress through each of the trading companies and as they reach certain levels the world events will then be unlocked and then they can dive to them. And that does mean that players when they dive to these world events will be doing so Ooh. on behalf of the trading companies. <laughs> these world events effectively become brand new voyages for each of the trading oh, companies. Oh that's a cool so I love that. To, that's for example, awesome. Complete a skeleton fort on behalf of the gold hoarders. When players complete a world event for a company, they'll have all of the new kind of loot items for that company, and then they'll have this special new world event specific like hero item that they have to return to that company. And I'm so excited to steal these things. Let's freaking so go. Kind of oh, Green, are you ready? When we first put world events Let's steal under everything. Into insiders, you could have lots of players turning up to a skelly fart at once. You could get there and then another crew could be diving at the same time and they would pop up at the same skelly fort that you were there but insiders don't like this because it meant that everyone was basically fighting each other rather than doing the skelly fort so it became more about fighting and defending rather than killing the skelly fort and getting the loot for yourself the insiders feedback was basically crucial to thank you insiders direction, and i think actually resulted in us landing in a in a much better place with these look at that events. so while you're awesome. the only crew now who can dive to the world event and you'll have it to yourself that doesn't stop other crews in the shared world sailing up and joining you there so be sure to keep a weather eye on the horizon that's cool i love that listen i love that so much i i really i really so I've thought about this. It's um, it's confirmed by Mike Chapman. I don't know if you guys caught it. So essentially what they said is uh, originally in Insiders, it seemed like everyone could dive to contested and uncontested forts and things like that. But the new way that they have it is when you dive, when you use the new mechanic to dive to a PVE event, like a world event, you will always go to an uncontested one. But in the shared world, anyone can come still to that fort or that uh, world event and steal it from you and attack it, attack you. So what's cool about this, this is why I love this. Um, when you use the mechanic to dive, you'll get specific loot via for that trading company. So if your order of souls and you dive to a skeleton fort, that skeleton fort is going to deliver to you uh, order of souls specific loot. You'll dive and you'll arrive at a fort that's being uncontested. But for someone that's in the server already and you see them at a fort, that means that loot that's there is unique loot specific to the emissary that that person is representing in the dive. 
which what this means is every world event, I, from what I understand, will be worth fighting for, stealing, and doing. That is amazing. That's awesome. Because I I don't want to I don't want to jump to servers. I hate hopping. So what I think will happen is this will like guarantee a more populated and active server. That's incredible. I'm so excited for this. I've been ranting about voyages too for a, a long time. So big. There are events that players won't be able to dive to on demand. Specifically the Fort of Fortune and the Fort of the Damned. We discussed this, um, but it never really felt like a possibility because those events are so driven by the idea that they appear as a, a one-off during your session and they kind of draw all crews together from the corners of the Sea of Thieves and everyone drops what they're doing, downs tools and, and goes to complete that event because they're so valuable and because there's so much unique loot there and because there's so much challenge in the gameplay and also the threat of other crews. Something that was really important to us was making sure that we kept that kind of beating heart of Sea of Thieves alive Thank you. with the emergent world activities. So we've made a bunch of quality of life improvements to all of the emergent activities as well. And we've also put really, really high value loot in the emergent world Let's now. And part go! of that was creating what, what Come we on, were calling that's awesome! As the S tier loot. So we have uh, S tier chests, S tier skulls, S tier trinkets for oh, players. Oh, we're to gonna find steal so much world. stuff. They sit above all of the loot that the player has access to from the quest table. So obviously we've moved the purchasing of quests from the traders and they're just now part of the ship but we still want the traders to have a place in the game and have a purpose in the game removing the voyages kind of gave us this space to put more stuff on the promotions so again kind of finishing off that cool loop of i've just played a voyage i've come back here i've handed something in and oh i've got like a rank up when you go to claim your promotion you're going to be presented with a certificate from the company shop and you know be able to view your items that you're going to unlock and then once you've claimed them you're then going to be presented with a new set of items that you're going to be aiming for and then this is setting the player up for the next goal because accommodations are short-term goals and you know the emissary is also a mid-term goal so trying to like funnel that in oh this is so good chat i don't think you, i don't level, even think we realized um, we how good really this important. is in general, for the game this was actually a great opportunity for the team to have a look at those older company sets and then upgrade them and quests are quite popular with players so when we got the task to come up with new rewards for the companies we knew quests were like at the top of that list my favorite quest that we're introducing is actually one of the quests for Athena's fortune because we decided to take inspiration from uh, the Fairy of the Damned. The crest will have those iconic skeletal horses you can oh, find on the ship damn. as well. And in general, it looks very ghostly, very creepy, and I think players are going to love it. Oh, then we also introduced some go. new trinkets that are a bit more grounded, a bit more lore-friendly. For the merchants, we've got this clock that may or may not tell the actual time. And then for the Order of Souls, we've got this mirror that is super creepy, super elegant that players can hang up in their ship. And then lastly, and this was the one I'm actually the most excited for. Gold it's order plushie. Using these trinkets that are like super cute plushy versions of the company leaders, and they look absolutely adorable. I think my favorite might actually be the Reaper one because he almost looks a bit angry in his face, <laughs> and that just makes him even more adorable. We know that a lot of our, especially our most dedicated players, have maxed out all of our trading companies. This and is true. We have begging yes. us for a better begging. longer progression system for oh. them, and so part. Of can we just can we just have a moment of silence for all of the loot that we have sold over the years as a max representative for the trading companies that have had no meaning <sighs> so many people have been robbed over the years chat <clears throat> for nothing but in season 11 we're going to rob you with purpose big change so of that and part of the discussions that we were really passionate about early on was the idea of distinctions. Distinctions essentially allow a player to complete a training company more than once. So we've expanded our max level cap for every training company, except the Hunter's Call. Oh, get wrecked, Hunter's Call. 100, which is where you'll earn a distinction for that training company. And when you earn a distinction for the company, your level will reset back down to level one. We've added in a total of five distinctions for all the companies. So 
you can kind of go around this the clock amazing. up to five times. I'm so happy. The training company. I'm going to have it's a tear a really running cool down my eye a little bit. Sure that all the treasure you cash in, you're always ticking something up. It always feels like you're getting something out of your sessions, even if you've played for thousands of hours, which we know some players have. So when players He's earn calling a us distinction right for a trading company, they earn a bespoke new cosmetic, which is a trading company ring that's themed to that specific company. So for uh, distinction one, you would claim one ring, then you get a second ring for distinction two, oh, cool. three, four, and five. And so rings! Like, hand has a ring we love finger. rings! The interesting thing about rings is like, it's one of the few player cosmetics that you can always see. Like no matter if you're reloading, you're fighting, you're taking stuff up, you can always see your rings and admire them. And I think that alone makes them quite high yes, value yes, for players. Big, big. And in general, players have been really asking for rings. They're a great customization option. So if players wanted to wear Order of Souls rings on one hand and Reaper's rings on the other, they can totally do that. That's With all the changes badass. that we've made to like the quest table and diving to experiences on demand, we thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of go back and look at all of the onboarding that we've done for Sea of Thieves and create some brand new tutorials. Let's Going go. from the main voyage to the main world, there wasn't much of a transition. Now you'll actually wake up on your ship instead oh. of waking up in a tavern. And when you're on the ship, be greeted by the pirate lord. He'll prompt you to start a new voyage. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> what? Let, that's awesome. Let's go. Hold on. We got to rewatch this. There wasn't much of a transition. Now you'll actually wake up on your ship instead of waking up in a tavern. And when you're on the ship, be greeted by the pirate lord. He'll prompt you to start a new voyage. Uh, you get to choose here one of the three voyages that we've built tutorials for. We're really keen to kind of teach players the core mechanics of each of the companies, like the Gold Order, the Order of Souls. That's and huge. Arms. Come each on. That's amazing. Tutorial takes you on a very short voyage to complete either an X marks the spot map, a bounty quest, or a simple kind of fauna quest where you have to collect a chicken and take it back to safety. Where the Pirate Lord will take you through the voyage step by step. We'll tell you- That's awesome. Uh, how to use Good the map job, table, Rare. Uh, a lot of people get confused. Once you get to the island, it'll give you instructions on where to find the treasure uh, and how to recover it. We wanted to teach a little bit in more detail the core loop of Sea of Thieves in terms of earning treasure in the world and then that being susceptible to loss from other players until you've cashed it in at the outpost so that they can be ready to play Sea of Thieves in, in that kind of high sea experience. And I just think for new players, I think it's going to really help them solidify what Sea of Thieves is about. They can do those and come back and think, actually, yeah, this game's for me and I understand it now, as opposed to, you know, maybe getting it, maybe not, and, and that being a bit of a gamble, whereas this feels like it's a real kind of step change in how we how we deliver those, that sort of stuff for players. So we ran it through UXR, which is our user experience research lab. We've done two studies on that um, with real players, um, just to really plug in any holes to make sure that new players are going to really understand how to play the game. So we've got a lot of confidence in these tutorials that they're going to hit the right spots and that players are going to get what they need from these tutorials. Season 11, the changes to the emergent world mean that regardless of short or long sessions, there's always something waiting just beyond the horizon to take you by surprise. For people who only have the time to play shorter sessions, there'll be more meaningful progress available to them, more predictably. And for people who want to play longer, classic Sea of Thieves sessions, we truly believe there'll be more treasure and gold on the sea. Look at that, that ring, Reaper ring! More exciting. Wow. That is, that is fantastic. Wow. This is everything I've wanted in Sea of Thieves for a long time. Can I just say that for a second? Season 11 is going to be, I pro from what I understand, probably one of my favorite seasons that has dropped in the game in a long time. I've often ranted that Sea of Thieves has so much stuff within the game that they don't need to, they don't need to like, make new things we just got to take what we have and improve it we get better voyages we get faster start points for new people for brand new players they get a better onboarding experience which is fantastic this is going to stop potentially like people spawn camping people at outposts somewhat you know not all the time but a little bit maybe just a tiny itty bitty bitty bit we're still damn pirates and you guys are still out there doing that stuff but that being said holy guacamole And the uh, the raid, what did they call it? It was like raid world events or whatever, raid voyages. 
Think about this for a second. I'm going to state this again because I don't know if I can state this more clearly. From what I understand, when I represent a company and then I dive to a world event for that company, the world event's loot changes accordingly to the company I'm representing, which means now world events are in the same kind of mindset as voyages, not just world events. So for someone like me who likes to steal treasure, that now makes it worth stealing. That that regular fort makes it worth going for. The Ashen Wind, we see somebody there, makes it worth fighting for. That's actually insane. Hippo, do you do podcasts? Maybe it's your mic, but you got a voice for radio. How dare you? I have a face for radio and a voice for print. Okay. Don't get those two things confused ever again. We will ban you. This is really big. They scaled the voyage, like the 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 loot reward. I think they said something that is very. Uh, I think they said something that was very important. Is they said they tried to match the length, like what is it, the gold per minute or whatever? I don't even know what you'd call that, it, but it's like gold per minute. The amount of time that if I were to go do a Fort of the Damned and how long that takes to doing a, another maybe less known voyage, uh, the time that it takes to do that, they tr they're they trying to like get closer to the reward factor that everything can be rewarding, which I think is fantastic. Will world events that are not claimed by dive still happen? I believe so, yeah, right? So the servers are still going to go on as they are right now but if you know how many times we've been in a server where a skeleton like a skeleton forts up and no one's there and then that just sits there for 15 minutes until it despawns and then another thing spawns up and no one's doing it now people will potentially be doing that all the time like this is great and distinctions oh this season 11 might be my favorite season I got to be honest, chat. It might be one of my favorite seasons. Good job, Rare. You guys watch this. You guys are the best. Thank you for listening to our complaints, our rants, and everything in between. The fact that we have distinctions, prestige for trading companies is huge. The fact that we have a retool on the voyages to reward the time put into it is amazing. Honestly, this is going to be a big one. I'm excited for season 11. And you're releasing it on my birthday. Thank you, guys. Big. Does this de-incentivize de running guild Emmy? I think so, for a little bit. <laughs> I think we still get guild rep for selling, though, right? With just the ledger stuff. We still get guild rep for selling. I think we get two things now, right? This is big change. This is crazy. Because this is all big, big. Everyone spam big in the chat, please. Wow. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to do with my hands. Yeah, I agree. If Fuzzy said that, I agree. This is going to be, this is the biggest update to Sea of Thieves that we have seen. They have taken everything that they have done and potentially fixed all of the imbalances from treasuries to sea forts, to world events, to Fort of the Dams, to regular voyages. It looks like they've done everything to fix that. And on top of that, they've made it easier than ever to start your voyage, which is great. I love the PvE diving mechanic. I do. Uh, all that means is people are going to be able to get to their voyages quicker at the start and continue on faster, which means the servers will just be humming, I hope. I hope the servers just hum. Wow. Very excited. Good job, Rare. You guys should pat yourself on the back. That was some good stuff. I feel like that's going to ruin tucking, though. If you try to tuck before an event, you're going to have to black screen when they dive. No, 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 no. Everyone, let me just, let me, for the last little bit, everyone who thinks is going to ruin tucking, you're not thinking about it clearly. R listen to what they're saying and not what they're not saying, Okay. What they're saying is they want the PvP PvE diving mechanic to help you start your initial voyage quicker. If you decide to dive after you do a world event, 
with all of that treasure and you're like, nah, we're just going to dive again. All of that treasure stays, which means the tucker who's tucking will, will stay too, but he'll also get all of the treasure. So it does not, it doesn't change anything to tucking. The only thing that it changes is all of those people, mostly content creators. I'm one of them. So I understand, uh, they would tuck on brand new people at forts or at outposts. Literally, that's all it changes. There's a group of people out there that'll tuck and troll people that are at an outpost that just spawn in. Um, that's the only tucking that'll change. Now you got to tuck and you got to get that initial tuck from somebody when they're at an island or something or at a fort. It really changes nothing. It's fantastic. Not wait. Big. Big. I'm so excited for this update. My goodness. <laughs>